<laughs> Good morning, everyone. Welcome the ones online. We'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anything to add or to eat? No. With that, a motion to. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll, I'll second. Motion by Erica, second by Dave. All in favor? Aye. 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 Minutes of the March 19th meeting. Corrections? I had a couple. I, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> there's, there's, go ahead. There's a comma that was upside down. <laughs> no, I don't have any more. Are you an English teacher? <laughs> no, my mother was. Uh, <laughs> my sister is. Was. <laughs> uh, on page two of four, we're under number three reports, the third bullet. It should be right R I G H T, not right R I T E, right? That's a different word. That means a, a religious ceremony, usually. <laughs> so I learned that one. <laughs> That's a good, I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> you have the definition of that. That's <laughs> and then down two more bullets where, it's, uh, where the word motion is misspelled under Project 412. Yeah. That's all I had. Okay. Just grammar. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I don't have any. Right. Richard? No. I couldn't find any punctuation or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make what? a motion to approve the minutes. <laughs> motion by Eric. Oh, second. second by Dave. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Here we go. Oh, actually, I think I might have had one. <laughs> I have one highlight. Uh, just a question. It just said, um, it's pro I was thinking about it, I probably was right, under attorney where it says table retention bonuses for assistant until next meeting. Um, there was no, there's no, he doesn't, I mean, is tabled the right word is the only thing. Tabled. Well, it was with, it was withdrew, pulled from, withdrew, it was probably withdrew, just pulled from the agenda. Withdrew. Withdrawn. Withdrawn, withdrawn. withdrawn, I think it's probably. Yeah. Probably, but that's the only thing because he can't table it. It would have to be the board. Yeah, yeah. It. yeah. Is that okay? If we get, can we? Is that okay with the board? If yeah, yeah. 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 The motion, just yep. withdraw the that instead of. Yep, I'm fine with that. Yep. Next, do we have consent agenda? Anything, Mr. Chair? I'd like to pull the uh, for discussion the purchase of a floor scrubber. Purchase of a. Okay. I'll put that under. Let's see. It's page 12. Is Steve's here? Uh, you don't really have anything. I think all this is stuff's under consent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You can just put it, it immediately after this. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, that's okay. No, no, or just after we that's consent. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, we'll move it. Or we can discuss it and then consent to it. I don't care. No, we can pull that and we can just talk about when he's here. Okay. Anything else? If not, uh, move to approve the consent agenda with the one item pulled. No, I'll, I'll make a motion. Second. Hey, Dave, Barry, fear to the discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Moving on. Did you want to discuss that now or? Yeah. Um, I just was concerned about the dollar amount for a floor scrubber. Was that right? Was that dollar amount right? There's actually two of them. There's two of them. One's a sweeper, okay. one's a scrubber. Yeah, and they're both about 12 something. Yeah, I saw that they're 12. That's why I was wondering, but um, I'm just I, I'm just wondering if that's, I mean, we just went through, bought one for the jail or, and that was, we looked at a, a much cheaper version. Um, and I'm not sure if that would be good enough for what you need out there. No, no they they looked at some of those, and I, 
think they even tried one out and they went to the little more expensive one because there you could actually dump the material out of the scrubber and stuff. The other one you had to kind of hand dig it out. Yeah. And and I had some questions about it too, Barry, but we're having the biggest problem is that that dirt's it you can't squeeze it into the drain because it's got that explosion tank there. And so then that gets plugged up and then to get that you can't just have a septic guy pump that out. It takes a hazardous guy. Mm. So it's been getting really expensive to clean the dirt out of there. And I had the same concerns you did, but after going through it, we and and that's what John said, the the less expensive one, you can't just dump it. And so uh, Yeah, you can you can dump it then rinse it. I mean, cuz I have the I have a cheap one that's and then you then I just I just scrape my sand and gravel out and put it in, you know, don't put it in the system then. So oh, this um they, they tried a couple out, and the one they, and they, if you need two of them, I mean, you need one. A, one is just a dry sweep, dry sweeper. Yeah, a dry sweep. Yeah, and there is a lot of dirt out there, I guess. No. and that, and I've heard this. So it's it's stuff yeah, that it uh, is. It's from, yeah, from small pieces of paper to, that would sweep that up. Yeah, and then scrub the the fine dust. Yeah, uh, I guess there's just a lot of dirt out there. We get the trucks backing in. And how does the how does that work with um, that sweeper? If it's a dry one, how does that not get it so dusty in there that it's unbearable when you're doing that? Well, I think is that is that got a vacuum in it, or how did that? Yeah, I think work? it's got a vacuum. I yeah. So you run over with that first. Mm -hmm. Well, and they do most of it. There's just certain areas where they need the scrubber, and most of it they're going to do with the sweeper. And it seemed after after discussing it, it seemed like that's probably because it's it's a big place. And How big of an area are we looking at? Well, well the expansion is quite a bit. Off yeah, there. there's a lot of room, and then we're looking at adding more equipment. <coughs> there's some that's, that does is not getting the dirt, but it's going to, and so. Yeah. Well, I, I think the the scrubbing and the keeps that dust down is very inval. It's invaluable to be in the work. Place where you have a, a cleaner environment, and that's I mean, I'm just questioning whether that's Steve. The, 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 yeah, there you go. We're discussing yeah. that the floor sweeper scrubber. Sure. They were just they were just explaining that it's that it's the benefits of this rather than a cheaper model than sure. like the. We had rented one from Okay, there we go. Thank you. And uh, that was a floor scrubber, which actually didn't work very well because it. It's designed to pick up wet material. So like if you, a truck comes in and they leave mud and stuff, you can't pick that up with a floor sweeper. It'll plug it up and doesn't work very well. And so we talked to this company that makes these commercially. That That's what they do. And they brought in a couple of different models, which were in your packet. And they came and actually demoed one. And his, that's what his recommendation was, because to get that size for that size of that facility, that uh, Sometimes on that size of a facility, they might actually get a rider, but that's there's too many crooks and crannies in there to get around. So he recommended using a sweeper at, to get all the dry stuff. So like when you come into the main area, getting by those bays, that doesn't get real wet right there. All those areas that'll pick up all the debris and the dust. But then when you got where the trucks come in or the drains as you were referencing earlier, you'd need uh, a scrubber for that as well as if you want to get actual dust in uh, the areas where the sweeper was. And so these would be large enough that they should, and they're commercial uh, machines that they should last for many years. Like I said, we did rent one, uh, a scrubber, but it worked well, but it just kept breaking down. It just, it just wasn't designed for that size of a facility and that type of floor. Because they're concrete, they're not a finished floor, you know, they're not, they're not a, I don't have a finish on them. Yeah, I mean, I have a, I have a cheap, cheap one, and it's just concrete floor. I do, but I don't have any. I mean, it's not the scale or the, 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 not as often. But um, I will go with the recommendation of the committee. Um, I, I don't want to dig in deeper on it, but I, I just was thinking that you might be able to get by with just a cheap one. Like, I think we just did that over at the jail to, to look at that. Sure. No, we had pretty good 
discussion back and forth in the committee, and actually a couple of committees, and for we brought this forward. So, with that, uh, being we pull it, a motion to move forward with it for purchase. No, I'll make a move motion to move forward with it. Uh, second. All second. Just to right clarify, right. it's it's to purchase. To right. purchase, yeah. Purchase. Yeah. For twenty five zero eight three point seven five. I don't yeah. need that at all. For the two, the sweeper and the further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thank aye. you. Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> Was there any open forum back there, Steve? No. Okay. Reports and correspondence. Once, uh, <clears throat> I can go first. I had Crow Wing Watershed last week. We met on Wednesday, but it was a hybrid by Zoom um, because of the weather. So we were not able to vote on anything, on anything but we did. Um, we're moving forward, going over all the goals, and our plan is to vote on them at our April meeting. Also had EDA. We are continuing to plan the economic future workshop. We're um, planning that at the end of May, collaborating with the city. Also continuing to learn about the, the public housing programs. We had a presentation on them at our meeting, and then we established a subcommittee to review the bylaws. Um, also, we met with NPR, Barry and I did last Friday to um, have some further discussion and interview regarding the White Earth land transfer. And Todd and Mitch. Sheriff Glender and Mitch were also there. And then, just one other thing, I had received an email from the supervisors of Wolf Lake Township. They said that they had sent a letter back in December um, asking for an easement for their township dumpster site. I don't recall getting that letter, but um, so I, I told them I would bring it here. They brought it up at their township um, annual meeting and the um, people voted to proceed with it. So they're not sure how to move forward, but they're looking to get a piece of land owned by Becker County that's off County Road 38 and Balmy Cemetery Road just to move their dumpster site. Currently, their dumpster site, I believe, is right behind the liquor store, Wolf Lake Liquor is Store. It dumpsters or recycling? Recycling. So they just want to move it off the road there. And I'm, I wasn't sure what to, how to proceed. So is that something I can... I think I you have Steve. Steve on that. Oh. Okay, maybe I'll just forward it. Yeah, I worked through Steve, but I, I don't have a problem. I'd, I'd probably just as soon either a temporary easement or just an agreement that they can okay. put it there. Okay. I'd Along with that, minute. talking about Wolf Lake <clears throat> request from uh, SEAL on the ATV, mm -hmm. yep. that it should have been the event request to extend it west to the campground. West, right west of town? Yep. And we should have requested it. Yeah. And how that, I said, probably we can work through Kyle and get it amended. Yeah. To the resolution. That would, that would be good because that's, yeah, there isn't much of a ditch there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, we told the basic work through Kyle and see if we can. Was that them. through the township also? Yeah, township was through. I think they just recommended her yeah. or. Okay. And I can see it because you got the campground and mm -hmm. all other activities out there. Okay. That was all I had. <clears throat> I, I can go next. I, I had a DAC meeting and they had a fundraiser on the 29th of February for a sense to, to update and remodel and redo their sensory room. And they raised $18,000 which is really, they were really excited about, about that. And then um, they're also, the, they're going to sell three older, three vehicles that they're not using anymore. And with, they're gonna take, when they sell those, they're gonna take 12,000 from the sale of those to make 30,000 to do the entire project. Originally, uh, the, our executive director, uh, Karen Hill, was just going to do the smaller part of the sensory area, but then we as a, DAC board decided, well, let's take that funding from those sales of those vehicles and do the whole thing. So she she estimated the cost to be thirty dollars. So it's going to be really really nice. The, I don't know if anybody's been in the DAC, DAC lately, but there's there's a lot of interior updating that needs to be done, and and that's a good start. So another thing at the DAC, um, 
Madison Blayhut, who's a senior at Drill Lakes High School, is doing her capstone project. And a capstone project is, uh, I think Mark Jensen on our joint governance meeting touched on a little bit. Uh, they, they, the students pick something they're interested in and maybe they can make a difference in the community. And so what she decided to do is she's going to do some landscaping in front of the DAC, dress up the front of the, the, the building. She's going to do some edging, plant some flowers, do some trimming, um, maybe do a little other landscaping, fix some ed edging around around things and make it look nicer. Because it does it does need some help. It's kind of gotten out of control a little bit. So that's kind of cool. Uh, they're also going to have a rummage sale and barbecue at the DAC this summer to help to do a little mini fundraiser during and then during the water carnival they have a they have that rummage sale day i think citywide. yeah citywide so they're going to do it that day so that's the plan uh, i also had a lakes country service cooperative meeting uh one of the things that that the the lakes country service co-op does is they're a, a carrier for insurance and so it was kind of interesting they they had three reasons why the price of insurance is increasing and going to increase um, one of those is during COVID, for that two-year period most people did not go to the doctor for their regular checkups so they didn't there's a lot of they're finding that there's a lot of health issues that they didn't catch earlier during their checkups and now they're catching them now and so it, there's more claims so it's raising that might help raise be part of raising the costs they also the rising cost of specialty drugs is a big deal i guess and then an interesting fact that I found is that nursing wages have gone up almost 25% since 2020. So that, that was an, those are the three big reasons why insurances are could possibly increase and have increased already. They all, one other thing they do at the DAC is they have educational programs for schools and they're, they're doing some, they were able to do some new things the state legislature allowed them to do a few new things. So they're allowed to, um, if a teacher is, is a licensed teacher, they're, they are allowed to train them to be certified in a different area, which is a big deal because there's a very large shortage of teachers and mm -hmm. there's a lot of teachers that are teaching out of their <laughs> training area. And now there's an easy, now there's a convenient way, I guess, to put, put it that they can be trained instead of going back to college and learning you know, spending more money, they can be trained through the, uh, through the Lakes Country Service Co-op, and the Lakes Country Service Co-op offers that service at, at a reduced fee or maybe even a, not a fee. So that's kind of, that's, that's a good thing. They also offer a teacher prep programming for teachers and for uh, prospective teachers. So they, that's, a, that's a huge deal for younger teachers because they need to, when I was a younger teacher, I, I wish there was something like that. And then they also, we have a mentor mentorship program at our school, but they offer a mentorship program through Lakes Country Service Co-op for all the schools that are involved in their co-op. <laughs> and they and that's a big, huge aspect because there's a lot of things as a young first year, newer teacher, they you need to be, be aware of. Um, they, and then they also are able now to offer certification for special education teachers. In the past, special education teachers would have to go to a, like a college, like a, so to speak, or get trained that way. Um, and now this Lakes Country Service Co-op can do that, which makes it a, with, with all these things are making it more readily available for people to do these things because that's the shortages of what we have in education or, or especially in special ed and, and just teachers. Um, had a fair board meeting with John. Um, one of the big hot topic that they talked about was their bleachers. So currently they have some bleachers that are unusable. And so their current capacity is about 14 to 1500. Um, all of that is on all of the non compat the non usable bleachers are on the south end of the arena. So they, they came up with a plan. They're going to replace the green treated timbers under the north bleachers because they're, they're starting to rot out. So they're going to replace those. So then they're going to leave those bleachers there and use those. All of the bleachers that are on the south end that are no good, they're going to get them out of there as fast as they can. And then they're looking at purchasing a smaller set of bleachers that is handicapped accessible that they're going to put on. They, they want to put on the west, the northwest corner of the grandstand area so that then that seems to be an easy place for 
wheelchairs next, and next to the flagpole. Next to the flagpole, yeah. And then um, they're going for the south end of the arena during the fair. They're going to rent bleachers as a as a short term and possibly a longer term fix. Um, they found out that it's super expensive to get new bleachers and to or to move their ble their north bleachers to the south end, which I think was, was it seventy thousand dollars a move. I think, yeah. So they they they're that's their they're kind of their plan now. Uh, one other thing at the fair, their big topic was when that when that when that uh, gymnastics building was built, it caused a huge water issue drainage into the fairground property, spent mainly into their uh, one of their buildings. I can't remember which one it was. The the towards the, towards the Cattle yeah, Barn. Right? Yeah, Cattle kind of Barn. Yeah, that and comes off city property. Some off city off property onto there. the county property. So the 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 city and the fair board have worked out a temporary fix. Um, to, to, to solve that problem, and then when the the uh, gymnastics facility is added on to, then they're going to have a permanent fix. So, so that's they've been waiting, they've been wanting to do this for quite a while, and now they finally got that too. So, uh, and then just one more thing that I had from the fair was the derby. Uh, they're having new rules for the drivers for the cars. Um, they hadn't, they didn't really talk about what the rules are going to be, but they're going to publish those on their website and then and uh, on their Facebook, I think so that they can get them out there. Um, and then also, the drivers requested that that only they park in the pit area, not other people. So they're going to so they're going to manage that a little better, and then they're going to, the BMX track that's on the south end of the, the arena area, they're going to level that out, and they're going to, they're, they're going to use that for parking for during, during the derby, so people can park back in there, and they're going to charge them a little bit more to park there, is, is it's kind of like a premium parking spot so if anything else for no just back on the bleachers that are going to work with cody pfeiffer to yeah on, on grant funding because yeah. there's grants available it yep probably be for 25 into 26 so then i also had sheriff with very um we taught we t the the fbi had dropped the ball a little bit i guess uh we have to have a disaster recovery plan for the entire county and obviously, there's a lot to work with in the sheriff's department with that disaster recovery plan, and it needs to be completed by the first of October of this year. So she's going to come back to our committee in about four weeks. And with, Judy, Judy presented, yeah. and yeah, sorry, thank you, Judy, for grabbing the yeah. grabbing this and um, how, how fast and how much, how in how in depth we want to be. And sure. it's something we just got to keep working on. Yep, and she's going to come back with some possibilities and some internal and maybe some external costs for the next meeting or for next meeting um then uh, uh body cams they're gonna we need to get new body cams so they're going to send out an R, some rfqs and when they get the rfqs then they're going to bring them to us and we'll take a look at them other than that i think everything else is yeah there. the thing with the body cams is <clears throat> the company that we were with was it watch Greg, um has sold to um motorola motorola and they're they're well we have they're not supporting anymore mm -hmm. so we have it's time to make a switch so Instead of just making a switch, we're going to look at, or instead of just adding camera, new cameras, we're going to look at the whole system and seeing if it's uh, where we want to stay. And I think uh, Todd had said there's another system that's the state and is kind of utilizing more, and it's it's um, probably where we want to go. And we were looking at, we had committed funding for that out of the, out of the um, special, special general plan. fund previously we've committed that funding already so it's not an it's not something new that we're looking at it's something that we've um, committed to earlier and are looking for what best um, options we have so um, did you want to put out did you want authorization to put out an rfq or do, do we want to or we just allow them to ask for applications at this or submissive sub, submissions I just i think you just go on his own out and get the prices and as long as we're aware of it and the board is okay with Putting out those. I think one question we also had was if it's on state contract, do we need to go out for RF? Right, and I don't think no. it is on our uh, no. on state contract, no. is it? No. We're still looking into that. Still looking into that, yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's what we hope to bring this to the board eventually. But yeah. we'll put out RFQs and and seeing which, you know, they're not apples to apples that the yeah, systems not, and yeah, the just better. Run through committee and when yep. he gets the information, and we'll bring it, bring it forward. Then I think everything else is on the agenda too. So, so then Barry and I also had Sunnyside Nursing Home uh, meeting, and Sunnyside is doing really well. 
Um, they're doing a great job of retaining employees. That's directly related to Ashley McNally, their director. She is awesome. She does a great job with employees. They love working for her. They're retaining them. Um, she's been very proactive too in, in keeping their salaries competitive so that they can so that she can keep their employees. And what did what did what did she say? We have twenty eight seven eight beds filled now. Or is it 27? Uh, we're, we're hoping to be over our budgeted number yeah. in this next month. Yeah. So, um, we were, we were, we had a, there was a mistake in auditing yep. for us. Um, through the state gave us one time funding and that got, when the auditors put that in, when our accountants put that in, we don't know if it was previous auditor, auditor at Ecumen or, but they put it in under a reimbursable and it should not have been under a reimbursable to raise your, it raises your rates then. So. Yeah. Um, that was corrected. There's no penalty. It was just a mistake. That, but unfortunately, we will. We don't. Our bottom line isn't yeah. quite as good as we thought it was. We're yeah. still in the black, but it's yeah. it's not as. It's not as going to be as good at yeah, the end of the as year. what yeah. we were yeah. thinking it was. Because so the funding is going to be was it thirteen dollars? Reduced, reduced daily rate. Reduced was, daily rate. I think rate. It was a. I think it was thirteen dollars. Thirteen dollars per person per day. Yeah. And that adds up. It does. It yeah. adds up fast. So, so anyway, it was a, otherwise uh, Sunny said had a, a good report. Yeah. Again, uh, great, great uh, work environment out there. Mm -hmm. I think is is how they can retain work. Yep. And again, they are leaders on the state. On, on they are that size of that size of nursing home. But we just have a gem over there. So yeah, and Ashley always says that <clears throat> their employees take value in the place and and then in the clients, and they they really they love being there. So that's great. That's all I have. So Richard and I had um, NRM. Um, Dutton Locks, we, we touched on that a little bit earlier, and we just got an update that maybe shift the positioning of that, and this was just yesterday, I think, uh, shift the positioning of that, the new building. Uh, <clears throat> that new can, can keep the old one there until it's done. Um, it looks like I don't think that would hurt anything to put it there. We'd have to reroute the bike traffic a little bit, but <clears throat> that's just that's just a, a new road. But... Um, <coughs> <coughs> the tra the the trail is going to be going out there. And the other thing we looked at um, was <coughs> the possibility of purchasing docks to, to offload people on the on the tram at some point. Um, kind of we worked through that and thought that a five foot dock, if we're going to do that for the tram, a five foot dock might be better. It's that extra foot is uh, uh, really nice when you're un unloading like that, especially if you're especially for us unloading people from the public, but. Um, Those would probably have to be special ordered then from, mm -mm. there are not too many in oh, stock. Oh, I, we got a five foot dock. Don't yeah. Beach King makes them every day. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean, Beach King. But uh, they're they're pretty yeah. common. Yeah. Um, we had a little update on the Toad, Toad Mountain. They're, they're working on a purchase agreement and they are, um, that, that comp or that group um, is looking at us and saying, you know, pretty soon we're going to have to come up with some we're going to have to commit money, commit mm -hmm. funds to it if we want to move forward. And that dollar amount was a little bit much. Um, so, yeah, it, it could be up. We're, we're responsible for the interest on the, the funds until the, and that, you know, it depends on how long that goes. But if it's at 8 9% interest, and that, that adds up pretty fast on a big project. So um, they could, they said that alone could be up to 200000 um, So we're looking at what our risks or what our liabilities would be um, and if we bat, if we said at some point said no, we're, if these grants don't look like they're coming through, what are what are our obligations? So we're looking into that type of thing. The other thing would be, um, what was the other expense? About thirty thousand was was that the? Uh, um, uh, I can't remember what that. There was, there was another about. expense on that for about thirty four. Yeah. But the big thing is we're going to wait and see how much of it, how much those grants yeah, come out gonna, to and what, it, what it's going to cost us. And, we, and if that money was reimbursable under the grants, too. Yeah. That was another question. Um, I'm looking at some of these other items The are on our, on our agenda. We're looking at planting trees, and we're going to continue doing that. Just, you know, in the, in the forest, we're going to continue planting uh, uh, that we discussed that, and obviously we discussed the legislator. Um, as Eric said, we had a meeting with uh, Dan Gunnerson from Minnesota Public Radio. Um, Sheriff Glander and Mitch were there, um, just sharing our concerns, and and he's going to let us know when that when that is um, 
going on air and, and it'll be going on air, but it, it's going to have a, pod, a podcast or it's going to be on, available online too. So um, when we find out, we will I'll let the rest of the board know. And thank you, Carrie, for reserving the room for us on such short notice. He texted me that morning and I'm like, and I'm like, uh -huh. I, I let Erica know that it, it was, you know, her district. I thought maybe she wanted to do it. And, and then we end up doing just a phone interview and it ended up being a, a sit down and actually worked pretty good. Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to get a break and let someone else have a discussion item and, and you get you get more, your thoughts are more um, coherent. Yeah, so it went, I think it went pretty well. I think, yeah, you I think it on went really well. Post, you know, just about everything we could think of and um, wordsmith. yeah, we can wordsmith each other. Um, then touch on Sunnyside and sheriffs and NR. Anything else that Richard on the NR? Well, just a couple things. You know, one thing is uh, we're looking at getting a cell tower up north by Bad Medicine Lake, mm -hmm. which is really important. And so that's, that'd make a lot of people happy if they could use their phones up there. And then the other thing is we are going to start fixing some of these forest roads a little bit. Um, some, so if some people are having fun in the mud, the mud there may not be as much mud anymore, but but it might be a yeah little nicer place to. We got we got some um, quotes from people just like the highway department does. You get quotes for hourly rates for to fix some of these just these things that need to be fixed, not the full road, a pothole, or a culvert wash. Yeah, we got or, culvert sticking up this high, yeah. you know, right out of the. So we're gonna the, the, those will be a little nicer. Um, went to, I had a Lake Agassiz Regional Library meeting. Um, the library is doing financially much better now because the um, state came in with some, some more funding. So they are, it's one of the few years we actually had a, I mean, it, not one of the few years, but they actually have a pretty good uh, balance at the end of the year. So that was, that was good. Um, if you want the annual report, I'll share it. If anyone wants it, review that. You're welcome to take it home and look at it. Um, also had Becker County Soil and Water um, had a real, you know, they're doing all the uh, the cost shares with shoreline restorations. If you if you remember, um, they are splitting a position now because the shoreline restoration is doing very well with with the Corman Lakes watershed. They're they're splitting a position 50-50, so that's that's working well. They're doing um, forest management policy, and this was interesting because uh, Howard Mooney came and gave a presentation on the two types of forest managers, you know, for tax reduction. So you can go and get a, for, he's one of the planners. So if you get a tract of land, a forest that you want to do a plan with, um, they can do a plan and then you and you show that you've done a plan, you know, you're working with that and, and you can get a tax reduction in two different ways. One of them is an annual, you can do it annually and, and I can't remember the name of, um, name of it and it's, and it's not, it's a little bit of reduction. It's not real, it's not real big, but the other one is, um, significant tax reduction on that land, but it, it's a commitment, and it's and it's it's not forever. But there are different lengths, and you have to let them know years. And if you do the ten year, you have to let them know at five years that you're going to pull it out of this. It's not something that you can. That's that's very flexible. But you are you are saving most of your taxes on that land. You're not basically you're you may not you. The way I read it, I was like you could actually make money by keeping your land in a forest in natural and forest management plan so um, it was interesting but it's something that's available for for us maybe we should even promote it because it's nice to keep more natural land than than you know everything fully developed and and to pay full you know the one one the one point zero rate on rural vacant land is expensive when you have no income coming off it it's mm -hmm. it's not a it's not fun paying those taxes on it um, I think, I think that was it. Oh, a couple of other things I did. Um, John and I did employ, I can't remember, was anyone else here? You and I did employee rec recognition. Oh. Um, went very well and thank you Peggy and Carrie for, and Amanda for putting that together. I know that that's a lot of work, um, but we had a real nice breakfast and uh, lunch up here and it went very well. Um, I think employees appreciate the being recognized for their longevity. We recognized 5, 10, 15, 20. And was there 125 and a one or two 30 year employees recognized? So uh, congratulations to them. It was quite an accomplishment. 
And the only other meeting I had at Lakeland Mental Health, we are um, we are meeting our budget needs and, and hopefully I, I kind of push that in the future that the Detroit Lakes office should be, and they're looking at this after Moorhead is being complete, that Detroit Lakes is the next, next facility that needs to be um, make major improvements, if not a new f facility. Yeah. So, yeah. But Moorhead's uh, on their second phase now and, and they're moved into the new part and remodeling the old part. So that's it. I had EDA with Eric and she got that and in a room with Barry. So. Yeah. Well, I had quite a few, but I'm going to go through them pretty quick here. <clears throat> Pelican River Watershed. Uh, we'll be meeting after the board meeting here with, with Kyle and going over the MOU with the county, Corman Watershed and Pelican River Watershed. Uh, they let bids on the Little Floyd Lake outlet, so that dam will be coming out and be more of a rock weir type dam going in. And they're also working with the landowners along Camel Creek going north from Floyd Lake on erosion control, <clears throat> the bank stabilization, which is one of the largest sources of nutrients coming into the Floyd Lake, Detroit Lake. And then they're also looking at possibly raising the water level in Camel Lake up there to similar what it does out here at Rice Lake is to keep that wet. It limits uh, a lot of the phosphorus growth and stuff like that. So, Airport uh, approved contract with Mead and Hunt for engineering and construction services for a mill and overlay on the taxiway. The new fuel system hopefully will be up and running by mid-summer. Just report on the hangars are full and we've got several on the waiting list. Uh, went up to the White Earth public hearing and testified with Sheriff Glander, Kerry was with. Really wasn't the public hearing, but it was, we got to testify. So, uh, negotiation at environmental and that's pretty well all covered. Kerry and I and Richard were up to Monoman County, that was a, their board up there and there was four other counties I believe represented. I uh, talked about the White Earth Forest turn back and also some of the agriculture farmer issues that's happening with with the White Earth Reservation. And I think a lot of them are going to be here on our special meeting on next week. John, one, one thing to add to that, I had a conversation with the <clears throat> Colorado County Commissioner and they were more than willing to help with the lobbyist. Um, but one thing we, we as we were talking, it's like, you know, we might need a, also need, need a secondary person to look at not just lobbying, but um, um, kind of supporting us some social media, you know, you know, I don't like a news, news media so on no. social media, but so maybe we need some more proactive um, yeah, adver I think Barbara, advertising, but. Part of our meeting will be to probably get a couple of commissioners from each colony on a smaller committee and work through a lot of this stuff and move forward and try to engage more and more counties. And uh, I think they're going to reach out to MRC and, and see if they can help support us. And, but I think, I think they, he was receptive and I think he was going to bring it up to their board to maybe that we, instead of them supporting this, maybe they can help put in and get a part-time, um, oh, what would the, what's the, Public yeah, a, a, like a PR, a, P, a PR person for the, for those type of things. So. And Steve Green did say that, that social media is a big, there's a lot of power there now and we should be involved in that. Yeah. So maybe a so, joint with the, the, the three counties or even the, even get up farther north that, that we should maybe collaboratively work together and. Mm -hmm. Along with that, uh, I'm not sure if we want to do it today, designate a couple of commissioners that probably would serve on this joint county board or? Would that just be an extension of the um, Tribal Relations Committee? Well, I no, like it's from that Manoman meeting up there. They talked about that. We, we talked about getting a, getting a committee yeah. with commissioners from each. 
and probably the administrator from each. Company. Right, but I was just saying it, it. It could just be an extension of their duties. Yeah. On that, it could be. Uh, Richard's been involved in a lot of those four or five meetings up already, and I think he'd be one. And I don't know if Eric, if you want to be on there, mm -hmm. the two of you, and. and yep. So. Yep, yeah, that works. I'd like okay. to be on there. Do you want to? Do you have a name for that committee that you want to? Should we act on it today or? Joint County. Um, or should we maybe come back? Joint County uh, Tribal Relations. I, I think probably an extension. Maybe um, maybe see what the other counties are doing and come back with it at the next meeting. Yeah, we can do it yeah, on what yeah. the because if connect. they're going to form, is it a joint powers or is it just a? <laughs> no, not at no. this point. It's no. just once a meet once a month and just keep keep on top of it and keep updating each other from anything that we might learn or any ideas we might have. Probably more information sharing. Yeah. I, I think I think that's a good idea. I, I think too though that we could expand that if we do work with a PR person, I think that would be come out of that yeah. group. One one county would be the host county and the rest of us would or rest of the counties would. But I think those are the type of things that that group could, could facilitate. So. Yeah, and I, I think an extension of what um, was already said, you know, we are, Becker County will be hosting that particular meeting with the other counties a week from today in the afternoon. So therefore, you know, designating two commissioners to sit ongoing on that type of a committee. We're, we're meeting next week in the afternoon? Yes. With that, That'll be public, so the whole board want to sit in on it? Well, we haven't decided that, no. so... Um, well, we, we, can, we agreed to host it here. Yeah. That's as far as we got. We can, um, if we have a name of the committee, the, the joint, <coughs> we can make that motion now to <coughs> the commissioners that are on it. So they, I'll make a motion to appoint Erica and Richard to our joint, uh, <coughs> joint meetings with other counties, named to be determined later. Um, about Joint County Public Relations Committee. I think the committee name can can wait, but I'll point them to the committee that will be meeting next year with other counties to determine um, maybe next steps. I'll next second steps for with the prediums and yeah. Okay. I'll second that motion by Barry, second by Dave. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thanks. I would also authorize the chair to name that committee. However, <laughs> <laughs> we'll work on it. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, moving on, uh, let's see, environmental appointments, covered fair board, uh, make sure I'm on the right, no, moved off. Do you have the Becker Bay presentation? Oh. Just one second, a couple extra here. Uh, we had Prairie Lakes Municipal Solid Waste. Repairs have started on one of the burners. Uh, plant is still burning about the budget amount so far year to date. Board is moving forward with uh, PFAF testing. This could cost uh, up to 60 grand, but we want to get the facility tested because the other facilities that have done a test on it are about 99%. Is that on the stacks? Then? Yeah. And so we can have that for our own plant down there. So. Um, there are, we'll submit an application for some of the new state grants up to 850000 for use in our, our re, reuse of our ash and our road project. So let's move forward. At one watershed, one district down in Ottertail, with elected officers, same uh, Wayne Johnson, Ottertail County, as chair. Just a little note that Becker County monies we received 2000 or 23 and 24 were just about 700,000. 25, 26 would be 605,000. We had an additional 400,000 that was extra that Bowser gave to our, our district for projects that wasn't used in other areas. So it, I think those two years or over three years are benefited us quite a bit. So move projects forward. That's all I have on that. Anything else on reports correspondence? We could do the eBay. Becker Bay presentation. Do we have any appointments? 
I just see there's one on here. Appointment. Oh, excuse me. Who can do Becker? I, I, anybody in appointments, I, I got one. I'd like to appoint Mary Seberg, District 3, the Planning and Zoning, our reappointer. She's agreeable. Make that motion. I'll, I'll make that motion to appoint Mary Seberg. A second. Second. Yep. Second by Erica. All in favor say aye. 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 Thanks. Okay. Now the presentation. Sandy. <clears throat> Chair, you just want to. Sandy, do you want to explain back how what we do for that county? So, for the last 20 years, Becker County employees have held an internal auction and auctioned off different various items. And um, <coughs> this is our, our contribution to the Becker County Food Pantry from Becker County employees and county board and uh but it's all all donated money this isn't county no. tax or money this is all this is all money given to yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. So, by employees and commissioners and staff so all the items are donated and all the contributions are Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Really, this is really going to help. So, you want to give an update on the food pantry on the success of the the oh, yeah? It's it's been fantastic since we've been doing. Uh, the numbers up. The numbers have increased greatly. Uh, just for March, we were uh, 130 some percent of the last year. And we, uh, before we moved in, we were running uh, 40, 50 families, maybe uh, uh, every day. We now we're up to 60. Uh, last Thursday, we had 82 families come in. <coughs> so the, uh, I think the new building has helped. Uh, all the media attention that we had before, uh, it has helped greatly. We've seen a lot of new families come in, younger people coming in on that. It's a sign of the economy. A couple of donations, the donations increased with the new building, the ease of bringing it in and dropping out. They, they have, yeah. We've gotten some a lot of different... Uh, <coughs> Organization that like uh, we got the uh, first week we were there we had like 2,000 pounds of food dropped off, which helped because we had our new fridge and uh, freezer. Plus we brought the old one over, so we have storage now. You know, I have to put a semi outside. So that's all helped. Everything we've done so far is has been uh, positive. Uh, the uh, people we serve, their attitude is, is is lifted up because they come into that base break building. Yeah. And it's, uh, they get to shop for their own food where we didn't have that room before. So the larger percentage of the families that come in now go around and pick their own food out. So that helps us, um, helps them take only what they want. And then now uh, we can we can adjust our ordering accordingly to what is what is being taken, what isn't. So it's going to help in the future too. How we do Yeah, it's been really good. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. That 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 facility is awesome, and it it uh, gives an atmosphere of these people matter, which is yes, yeah, that's, that's really that's cool. some of the comments we've gotten yeah. from them mm -hmm. that just made them feel like we cared, basically, yeah. instead of what we had before. So it's been really a positive experience out there. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you guys should come. It, on a Tuesday and Thursday, there's a whole different different atmosphere out there. People are talking, <laughs> visiting, having a good time. So I mean, it is it is nice. How's the parking out there? Parking is pretty good. Okay. Uh, we, we're managing with uh, the parking lot we got. We're and all of our employee or volunteers park out on the street, so the parking lot is just for the families that come in. So it works pretty good. Yeah, I, I do, dropped off some stuff last year, and it was it was busy. It was one of those days that it was yeah. it was busy. So yeah, yeah, we've got we've got uh, we've increased our number of volunteers, so that helps move everything along really well because now we have more people shopping, so we have more volunteering is helping the shoppers so it we we are uh, we've come pretty good since the first day we've we've improved so yeah it's been really good 
Mr. Chair, um, just one additional comment. I just, maybe Sandy said this, but I, I don't recall. Um, you know, the goal for this was set at the 2024, and I just wanted to make a note that, uh, uh, shout out to Becker County and everybody that participated that we exceeded that goal yes. and the 2391. So I just wanted to make sure right. that everyone well, was aware of that. Um, yeah. This is also, we're still in our March campaign. So this will go to our funds, which help us get a donation according to what we raise from the uh, state and that. So this will go into that fund too. So it's right in time for that. So good because we got till the six. So if anybody else wants to donate more money, <laughs> <laughs> we'll take it. Good, good. That's right. Thank you very Thank much. Thanks. Thanks, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. I think under county minister, we're going to move. Uh, being we got Vern and Aaron here, have them come up and do their presentation on Detroit Lakes High School Career Academy. Heard a little bit Thank about you. it this morning. <clears throat> Oh, I, I yeah. <laughs> Got to share. Just introduce yourself. Yeah, thanks for giving us a few minutes today. I'm Vern Shanathers. I'm the work-based learning coordinator for the uh, school district. I'm Aaron Swenson. Um, I'm our academy liaison for the school, trying to work with businesses throughout the county and uh, help us out a little bit. Uh, what we can do for them, what they can do for us. So that's my job. So I'll start off by just giving you a brief rundown on what the academies of Detroit Lakes are. About six years ago, we adopted the academy model in Detroit Lakes High School. And the reason behind that is we wanted our students while they're in high school to find out as much about themselves as possible, learn who they are, what their interests are, what their aptitudes are, what they're good at, and also at, at expose them to as many different things while they're going through high school as possible so they understand what opportunities exist in our community and our region. And um, that's a way for us to hopefully retain more of those students in our workforce and to put them in positions where they're a good fit. Um, so we start with them in, in ninth grade and we do a variety of different activities throughout their high school career to assist them in that journey or that process. And, um, you know, back in the 80s, we were a uh, uh, four-year college prep high school, like most high schools were, and that simply just wasn't a good model. When you look at um, statistics, only 22% of all jobs in Minnesota require a four-year degree. That means 78% require less than a four-year degree, whether it's a two-year degree, a one-year degree, some kind of certification. So we wanted to make we want to make students aware of the best pathway for them to get to where they want to be. <coughs> Some cases that might be four year college or more, but in a lot of cases, it's less than that. Um, so what I provided you with is a handout of ways that businesses and organizations can get involved with the high school. And uh, Commissioner Meyer wanted us to, to share some of those with you <coughs> today, um, simply because there's a lot of partnering, I think, that can happen between the school and between the county that will be mutually beneficial, OK? Um, so these are the different options and ways that, that the county could become involved and, um, you know, they can come over and be a guest speaker to different classes. And I should say we have five different pathways that, that kids select from going into their sophomore year. Um, human services, health sciences, business and entrepreneurship, production, which is ag, um, manufacturing and engineering, and and IT information technology. So a lot of those exist at the county level, right? Um, so they can come over and be a guest speaker for one of those pathway classes. And we've had people from the county do that. They can be a guest presenter and you might say, well, what's the difference between a speaker and a presenter? Um, we encourage the guest speakers when they come over, if possible, to actually engage the kids in activities, right? And we have lots of tremendous lab spaces. If you haven't uh, had a tour of our high school, I'd encourage you to do that at some point. But in all five pathways, we have uh, spaces mm -hmm. where kids can actually do things um, with their hands. We want our school to be known as a place where you get to do stuff, not just where you come and sit down and we talk at you. Um, field trips, which we've done here before, Carrie's helped us set those up in the past. Um, so the, the students, we try to get all of our sophomore students on two pathway related field trips during the course of the year. Job shadow, which would be like a half day or a full day where somebody, uh, a student comes and works with a professional in their job to learn more about it. And uh, the freshman career expo, which the county has participated in a lot of the different departments. 
Um, in October every year, uh, we have about 50 to 60 businesses and organizations come to the high school and um, they have a table and we have our kids in groups of four or five approach the table and they have to go to a table from all five different pathways and the person at the table will do an activity with the, the ninth grade students that something that's representative of what they do on an everyday basis and then after that our students actually interview the people the professionals so it's a very like um, I'd say high level career fair it's it's much better than most job and career fairs and that it engages the students at a high level and then finally on the back of this sheet is like uh, the culmination of all that their senior year we have all, almost all of our students I'd say this year we have 95% of them doing some type of semester long internship or Vantage project where they go out and work with a business for a semester for at least two periods during the day some of them maybe three or four depending upon the internship and the student schedule and uh, they, they work with uh, professional or professionals in that business to learn again more about the occupation and, and more about that business and that pathway um, and you know it's it's super flexible um, some some of them we cut to nine weeks if they're really observational in nature like health science dentistry and things like that sometimes they're three days a week sometimes they're two days a week um, some of them um, are a certification process like the CNA some kids will get their CNA certification so that time counts towards their internship that they do their senior year so the big idea again is just to give kids ex exposure to as many different things as possible and obviously the uh, benefit for our organizations and, and businesses like the county is it gives them an opportunity to create relationships with the kids to show the kids what they offer in terms of employment and maybe uh, you know I always say this kids if you can't see it you, you can't do it right so kids have to be able to see it before they understand that's something they can do as a career and the second part of it is uh, people will go where they're comfortable typically um, so you know the more we can create relationships with kids and businesses and organizations in our community that's just going to be a benefit for everybody in the long run so um, if you uh, want to share this with any of your department heads or organizations within the county please feel free to do that I notice I have my name and that I'm at the high school I don't have my phone number and email on there like I should but they could simply call the high school get a hold of me oh I do have, a, have it on the front so um, they can get a hold of us at the high school and, and uh, you know certainly talk about different possibilities and uh, different things that might be a fit for the county and the different departments within the county and and we have had students uh, Sheriff Glander and uh, the law enforcement uh, at the county level does a great job they usually take a, a student or two each year and um, had a lot of students go into law enforcement and have gone through that internship um, we've had um, students with the uh, county attorney's office we've had some in, with the human services um, some with the highway department and engineering civil engineering so the county has been very supportive of that whenever they can be and um, we appreciate that and and the big thing we want the businesses and organizations to know is like I said you can get involved on a lot of different levels sometimes people are very business like uh, uh, busy they may be a small business owner and maybe they can't do a semester long internship but maybe they can come be a guest speaker or they can provide a day job shadow um, you know whatever the best fit is for the business and organization too um, you know we're willing to work with everybody however it best fits their their business model and their needs yeah and one of the classes I teach is a 21st century skills class with a capstone project at the end um, our kids get three industry certifications they get 21st century skills they get college and career readiness and then they also get general financial literacy um, so yes we teach them how to balance the checkbook just <laughs> not physically but check their bank statements um, do all that uh, literally we practice mock phone calls you tell a senior to call somebody they stare at you and go <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about and so we have to practice that um, and actually we, uh, the capstone idea is really great what that is is our seniors have to we kind of say we they have to find a problem with their passion because we want them to be invested in this so what they do is they identify a problem sometimes it's a grand scale problem sometimes it's something within our building or county or city uh, they have to identify the problem they have to do some active research to prove that it's a problem uh, once that is taken care of then they implement a solution for that problem usually it's about a five 
to six week implementation process. And then at the very end, they document their data, what they learned and if they were successful or not. And then that culminates into a capstone night. Um, shameless plug, we have one coming up on April 10th on Wednesday. This is where all the students put together their, their wrap up of their projects. Um, we have one capstone project that's raising money for our canine units, I think. Um, we have a gal doing that who interned as well with Sheriff Glander. So that's going very well. She's doing a great job. So anyway, same thing with that. If there's any issues with the county or things that, that you say, hey, maybe a high school kid could tackle a little piece of this. Um, that's something we can partner there as well. And, and uh, if you have any ideas, please let us know. We have something called the Capstone Bank, where I'd love to tell you that every senior comes in with an amazing idea and <laughs> wants to solve the world's problems, but sometimes they need an idea or a nudge. And the more we can put in front of them, um, the better that is. And our Capstone Bank is used quite a bit. And it's kind of cool to see those kids have no idea what to do. They grab one of these bank ideas, and next thing you know, they do a great Capstone. So anyway, we can partner in those areas as well. I guess the other thing that I didn't mention is besides uh, occupation and career area skills and exposure we're trying trying to provide the students with, uh, Aaron and I are maybe also, I'd call us reality coaches, right? So we try to be very honest with the kids about um, expectations as far as being a professional employee. You know, you hear a lot about that, right? That uh, young people come into jobs and, and they maybe lack some of the skills that are necessary to be an effective employee in terms of attendance and engagement and uh, use of technology and just lots of different areas. So we try to tackle a lot of that too. So, you know, they hopefully they, they learn about a lot about who they are and what they want to do, but also learn a lot about what it means to be a good professional employee as well. So, yeah. That's that's a short synopsis of what we do. We could talk for a long time, but uh, um, I just encourage anybody, like Aaron said, at the uh, at the county, if you think you have a good fit for a student, and um, you know, a lot of them can do, I think, really good things, even as seniors in high school. Um, you know, that's something that we can visit about, and uh, you know, possibly help out some different departments where they have some work and need some extra help to maybe get some things done too. Any questions? How do you see the how the receptiveness of the community for for these programs is good? I mean, you're very well received. It seems like. Um, do you think that will change if the workforce needs change a little bit? I think um, yes. Everyone's looking for extra help, and um, I think maybe some people think this is uh, an easy someone to e easy come and gain some hours on. But but it's really a if you're doing a good job, it's really a commitment from the from the staff person too because it's not. It's not just easy to, you, you can't just throw someone in and they do the job. You have to do a lot of teaching. So, but do you see that, do you see that remaining stable, that commitment from the community? I think so. You know, in terms of the internships, John Flatt started it back in the mid nineties with what was in Audubon Engineering. And uh, I can't remember the previous name of BTD. But uh, so we've had the internship program for going on 30 years. And uh, there's been a lot of community support. Um, uh, you know, anybody, I should, I guess I would say anybody that thinks they can help and they're able to help seems like they want to help, right? Um, it's always good to help our kids and our youth and our schools when we can. And so it's been, I, they've been very supportive in that area. Um, I always try to tell them too, you know, um, if I over ask, let me know, right? Because you can do that. So again, we want to meet everybody at their needs and the level they can participate. And like you said, it's not just maybe to do busy work. That's not what it's about. It's to learn about a career and an occupation. So even though they can provide some of that help, it, it's to learn uh, more than just that. It's to learn about the actual position and, and the profession. And one of the nice things about our capstone project is every employer I've talked to is, is appreciative that we have kids identify a problem. They prove it's a problem. They try to solve it, and then they report back. That's a weekly thing in everybody's world. Yeah. You know, these kids take a semester to do it or a quarter to do it, um, but it's one of those things we're getting them started on identifying problems and realizing that yes, there's a timeline, and I have to fix this. And then at the end of the week or end of this end of the quarter, whatever it may be, I have to provide the data that I found, whether it's a good fix or it won't work. At least I've done the work to uh, try to uh, solve that issue. And every employer I've talked to said, thank God, we, we, we see this every day. We need problems solved and we need people to identify problems, not just be told to go do this. And that's why we let our kids choose their own thing. So most employers get the, the well-roundedness of it for every quality employee. You know, and in terms of the pathways, that was a good question. 
those will continue to evolve and change over time depending upon the needs of the workforce. When we created our pathways, we surveyed about 50 local businesses, uh, took a, lot of, a look at a lot of studies like the Fargo-Moorhead seven county study, Minnesota deed data, um, to determine what we should be offering our kids and what our region needed. Um, for example, um, next year we're going to start an automotive class um, where the, the students uh, get exposure to um, uh, general automotive uh, technician, diesel tech, and also CDL um, because it, we have such a large need for that in our area and we have a lot of kids that have an interest in that area so we're going to start a class in that next year uh, partnering with local businesses um, to provide them with different, uh, you know, job or uh, uh, um, workplace experiences and stuff too and and so over the course of time I think things will be added, things will probably uh, mm -hmm. go away depending upon the need of our region's workforce. I see that automotive need in the future is going to be um, battery replacement and battery, you know, working on electric and hybrid cars. Um, I mean, people, you always hear the horror stories, but in reality, um, to replace just a single cell in those is is not that expensive. And and if you, if you have someone local that can, instead of, oh, we got to put the whole new battery in, that's not usually the case. You just um, can just find what's wrong and, and fix it relatively cheap. And I think um, I think that's going to be a, a nice little niche for somebody to, to work on battery operated everything. I mean, it's everything's going going that direction. So um, good wait, good good to look into the future and, and get that those things done. So thank you for what you're doing. Uh, my wife's the counselor at the high school counselor at LPA. So um, she takes interns from different colleges all the time and it's it's not just it's not just easy it you have to work with them especially if if the if the individual isn't probably on their a game and you have to guide them more than what's needed or what's usually needed at that level so yeah well thank you guys any yeah. other comments no i appreciate you guys coming and I, I asked them to come because i wanted us to be exposed to what they do and how they we can and how we can benefit as a county from their services so and hope maybe we could partnership with getting more more involved get more because we we always need we need people we're always looking for good quality people to work here so I'm, i would yeah. ask care maybe in hr to look at how we yeah. can promote this to yeah. our department heads how yeah. we can make this how yeah. we can promote it for them to to do it maybe some sort of party you know it's kind of a reward for them for doing it i mean something to um, bring it out more in the forefront yeah, I put it in my notes to bring to my next department head meeting awesome. in April. Oh, good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you, guys. Appreciate always it. always let you. us know if there's anything we can do to help you guys out. We'd certainly like to try to do that. So we appreciate uh, your support. Do you have any lawyers? Three different students interning, yeah, yeah you know, with attorneys this year. So, yeah, yeah. possibly. Yeah. We need them to start. Yeah. Eight years from now, we'll, we'll be <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> we need them to start early. <laughs> Back to the Minister report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will piggyback actually on what they were talking about with internship. I just wanted to bring a quick update on our hiring. Um, some of our pools have increased significantly, which is very, very nice to mm -hmm. see. We've had some very high qualified candidates, big pools, even for some of our part-time positions. So we've had uh, yeah, quite, quite the success in some of those areas. So that's really nice to see. Um, so with that also, I believe today is the final and the closing day for our recruitment for the assistant county attorneys. So I would assume that we will get, we did get an update midway through um, Brian and I, and there were applicants in there. And then I would assume that that uh, applicant list will, will grow as well. So hopefully um, then interviews will, will follow that process as well. So hoping for success, then he'll be able to, you know, find employees uh, in that, through that process. Um, Amanda from our office will be sitting tomorrow at the career fair up at the, on behalf of all of Becker County. I know through the department head that was brought, department head meeting that was brought up and some of the departments were, you know, interested in that. So it, it uh, Amanda agreed to um, sit through and, and bring openings and she'll have a table up there. She's also going to do the White Earth um, recruitment fair as well. Um, I believe that's the week after up at the casino. Um, let's see. 
I had an email from Steve Skoog with regards to the Bentonville trip that we spoke about the last round. He would like to have he and Mitch both attend that. Um, I know he was pricing out some airfare and expense, ex what that would cost. If I recall from memory, I believe the board talked about up to $1,500. It probably will exceed that if they both go. So I, I don't know if you want to um, have a consensus on that or a discussion about that, what the board's wishes are. I guess it's more of a question. I think we discussed a little bit in finance yesterday, and we really didn't have a big issue with a few hundred dollars over what we said. Mm -hmm. I think it's probably well worth it. And yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that could fall under the administrator's yeah. cap. D yeah, discretion. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just yeah because we originally talked about the fifteen hundred dollars, and I think airfare is more expensive, and and motel costs are mm -hmm. more yeah. than what we were anticipating. Mm -hmm. They talked mm -hmm. about driving. Mm -hmm. um, that's a long, long That's drive. A long but, drive. Yeah, but I, I guess I'll leave that up to them. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know we talked a little bit about um, ongoing, you know, meetings with regards to the White Earth uh, Forest transfer. We um, had that hearing that I believe uh, uh, John had referenced with regards to the public hearing up in White Earth. I did follow up with they kept that open so you could uh, do a written response until the 29th. I did do a written response back to that on behalf of Becker County. Uh, similar information that we had submitted to the legislature. I also did um, just want to point out, I did add information in there about just, I think the disappointment that many felt about how that was conducted and, mm -hmm. and that there was supposed to be a Zoom link and people were supposed to be able to be in that hearing and then they restricted it, et cetera. So I did make a point to put that in writing back to them along with our opposition that we've uh, submitted elsewhere. Um, Next week. I think that's a point, though. That's Sorry. that's kind of a point to really stress that, you know. Here I felt it was high high importance. I I talked about the transparency and and. But it really they're asking for such a huge thing, and then but then they're not allowing. I mean. Yes. So you can see what the future could bring yep. if that did happen. Your input could change on the blink of an eye mm -hmm. on what what your response or what your. What they want. I mean, it just, it can change so fast. So you can say, you go to these committees at the state and say, this will stay open for public, you know, forever. And in a blink of an eye, it can change. Yeah, so I, I think that, I think oh. that type of behavior at a, a meeting, a simple meeting like that shows, in my opinion, what can happen if this did happen, if, if that transfer happened. So it's just, it, if you're writing a book, this would be called, what would the, what would the foreshadowing this is a foreshadowing of mm -hmm. what would happen. That's my opinion. Well, just being up there and seeing all the people that wanted to just sit in and hear in the hearing weren't allowed. They mm -hmm. stood out in the hall for close to an hour and a lot of them just left because <clears throat> they would not get in. So. Well, and we were originally told that there'd be an overflow room where people could view you know, it in progress, and then all of a sudden then there was no overflow room either. So it was very much restricted, and I that was very disappointing uh, yeah. for myself and for anybody that was in attendance there because we were expecting something else. So I, I felt that that needed to be put in writing back to them. Yeah. Thank you for that, Gary. Yeah, thanks. Oh, thanks. Um, also, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go nope, go ahead. Are, is the, the Tribal Council scheduled to be here on? Yep, I was getting to that. Okay. Yep. yep. Thank you. Sorry. Um, so I will be, we'll be sending out notice for a special board meeting a week from today at the same time. Um, that has been in the works for some time, and the board's wishes were that the whole board be in attendance. Mm -hmm. So we will notice uh, for that special board meeting. Um, also that morning, um, Liza will be here to finalize the job, uh, the uh, advertisement for the county administrator. I, I, I have told and, and communicated with with Lori, from the liaison from the tribe, that we will do that first. We'll do Liza's presentation. She'll be here via Teams. And I would expect that that should take no more than a half an hour. So I kind of have given them that, that timeline. I was told that all five of them, uh, tribal leaders, will be here um, and that it'll be an open form special. I've also asked them for their agenda items since they've requested the meeting. I did get two agenda items and I wanted to ask the board as well if you wanted to add additional agenda items since that will be 
the discussion, you know, during that special meeting. The two agenda items that they have provided are discussion around marijuana. And the second agenda item is um, they termed it as comprehensive planning. I think uh, leave it up to the board chair to set the agenda and, mm -hmm. and if it if he wants to expand it or okay. I think that's you know debate a little bit on adding the wider land transfer to it, but I think unless it's brought up, I know there's gonna be a lot of people here in attendance that are probably just listening. Uh, well, I, I would like to know what what they feel they can do better. I mean, I would like them to answer that question. What 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 we're lacking as a as well, a management might be an agenda item that we can. I I'd like to know what the average enrolled member how it would improve their life because it will be hard on people with investments up there. <laughs> people who worked very hard for a cabin on a lake or whatever it is, or it's the resorts, there's going to be a lot of things are going to suffer if that goes I, through. I think John can can work through that and see how he okay. wants to put yeah. that on the. Gary and I'll discuss it. See how you want okay. to move forward. Come up with some. Uh, oh. that, there's obviously no decisions going to be made. Oh. It's just going to be. It's just a discussion. Yeah. yeah. And, Sorry, were you no, no. okay. I, I, it was also with regard to that topic. Um, I did bring and ask the question at finance because I believe the sheriff. It was it started with the sheriff asking the question for, the, for that particular meeting, whether or not we wanted to allow public comment. So um, it was suggested that I bring it to the full board and ask. Um, I know I have my position on that, but I certainly would like to hear what others have. You know, we discussed a little bit too. We should just have an open forum, but I'm not sure if. Yeah, I don't you think know, for a special meeting we need open form no. like a regular meeting. And I and I don't think the public comment period would, I don't think, I think it would get too, I think yeah. it would be too, too much. Yeah, that's I think, what I we, think this is, this should fine. be a little bit more formal. I mean, well, as our first, I don't want the arrangement too, <clears throat> is probably having the round table out here. We all sit down or thoughts on that? We might be. We may should. We maybe should be actually go up to the jury room. It's wasn't not, it's available. Not available. Oh. We we did. Uh, I know Mary did some work on the overflow up on the third floor EOC. So the plan is to have the um, the link, you know, live so people can view it up there as well if they so choose. But they wouldn't be able to, you know, provide any any input. I think we'll have to use this space. I, I don't think we can all be out here because it would it would be smaller area. <laughs> So I think we should, I mean, it would be nice that we sit at the same table, but I don't think the room will allow it. I think if you were upstairs, we might have better. So I think we'll have to just get a couple tables out in front. Maybe and pull them, up. them closer. Yeah. Okay. I don't or is it too late for us to go somewhere else for a meeting? Do it at the public works building? The well, gym we haven't, room? yeah, we haven't provided notice. That's a bigger room, isn't it? And that's, that's stream available. We can stream out of there or, you know, I mean, that, that would be the only other <clears throat> real good option for us in the county. Well, I think we have overflow upstairs here. And yeah. And video and, but it's got to be advertised work. wherever you want to put yeah. it. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And we haven't, we'll be sending that out this week yet. So, so leave it as is. Is that I'll leave it up to the board chair, the chair's yeah, cool, discretion cool. where you, if. I think, uh, I, I just soon personally like keep it here and expand if we get, I don't know how many people are going to show up, but I, I would be probably 20, 30. I think it'd be, I think people are going to be interested. Yeah. No. I mean, I think it would be, okay. and if you allow testimony, we would, it would be. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that would, not, no. yeah. I mean, we just I could, guess that's could, point two. Of it be you may not have as many people if you're not allowing public yeah. comment as well too. Because that it would be recorded and, and people would be able to view it as well. Something we put in our notice, uh, no public comment. We can certainly make a note of that, I think. Oh, here to listen, so. Look, that it's okay. more of a work session. Yeah. Um, also with that special meeting, um, I had asked during finance if we do have any of the bargaining contracts mm -hmm. that are ready that we would uh, potentially tack that on as well if they're ready to go by that point just to move things along. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Yeah, I would, we would have to go in a closed session yep. after that 
it would be difficult to go into closed session and to, to hammer, make sure we're all on the same page and come back. It, timing would be yeah. difficult. It, it, it would be yeah, difficult. It may it not be work, better to wait for the, the, the following final. Week. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Unless it's. Yeah. Unless we're clear. Okay. All right. Uh, as long as we're on that yep. subject, uh, mm -hmm. Roger Winters did say the Township Association is looking at a resolution opposing this also. Mm -hmm. So that will come up Thursday night. And he also wanted to extend, he thought he was going up the annual meeting tomorrow. Thursday. Is it Thursday or is it tomorrow? No, the White Earth. Oh, I thought you meant the. There, oh, I oh, said, oh. usually we get an invite, but I didn't get one this year. So, over oh, the, um, yeah, casino, mm -hmm. where they have a lunch and then they're having a meeting and mm -hmm. polo. So, I said I'd bring it up. So I think there else. was one email, wasn't there? It, there was a. There was something. It was about, in the paper. Roger said. That. I I saw it somewhere. I saw it, but it was. But we did, you, we didn't get a postcard like. No, you usually get a postcard. So, okay. Continue. Right. All right. So, um, yes, you can. It's open to public. So, with that, as well as the township meeting that's on Thursday, uh, Roger did invite me to come and I will do that and introduce myself. My, um, idea was that I will uh, touch a little bit on the white earth and, and the, request perhaps that they join in with the resolution so that'll fit in what, what they're thinking already. Uh, I did tell yep. Dave and Carrie yesterday that I might not make it back in town in time for the meeting on Thursday. So yeah, I'll be, I'll be there. Dave will be here and yep. Carrie's going to do a little. Yeah, I plan on being there also. Are you? Okay. Yep. okay. okay. Oh. What time is it? Six, uh, uh, seven? Seven, seven at 6.30. 6.30 is the registration. Yeah. yeah, okay. So the last item that I have on um, Tuesday, we again, we touched on this a little bit, but I just wanted to be clear that um, this committee that we are going to name, where uh, I guess uh, Commissioner Jepson and Commissioner Verberg have agreed to be on the tribal, we'll call it tribal relations for now. Um, so we will be hosting those other counties here next Tuesday at 1 p.m. And so I will make sure that the two of you have notice for that. That was preset when we were up in up in Manoman, and then we agreed to bring it back here. I mean, I would imagine we'll have some discussion about the the, the meeting that we would have had mm -hmm. that morning and next steps as well. So that's all I have. Thank you. Well, let's see, Mary. Looks like, uh, Good morning. We have a number of licenses to approve. I'd like to start with the gambling permit, resolution 4241A, Minnesota Flyers Gymnastics at Crazy Golf Course. Motion to approve 1A. Second. Aye. Cool. Motion by Barry, second by Erica. <laughs> approve 1A. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> We have two combination on off sale with Sunday renewals to Inlet's Country Store and Jack Pines Resort. So moved, Erica. Both of them? Yep, both of them. All second. Motion by Erica, second by Dave. All in favor say aye. 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 We have three on sale with Sunday renewals Tri Lakes Roadhouse, Curly's on Cotton Lake, and TJ Randy's. Motion to approve the renewal of on sale Sunday. With Sundays, Tri Lakes, Curly's, and TJ's. Motion by Barry. All second. Second by Dave. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We have a 3 2 on sale renewal for Ella Marie's Cafe in Cormorant Township. Motion to renew the 3 2 for Ella Marie's. Motion by Barry. Second. For Erica. All in favor say aye. 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 Carried. We have Wine and Strong Beer on sale renewal for Ella Marie's in Cormorant Township. Motion to Approve the renewal for wine and strong beer on Ella Marie's. All second. Motion by Dave, or Barry, second by Dave. All in favor say aye. 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 We have three off sale renewals Buyers Liquors, Seven Sisters Spirits, and Richwood off sale. So moved. All second. Motion by Barry, second by Dave. All in favor say aye. 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 And the last, we have seasonal on sale renewal for Shady Hollow Flea Market in Lakeview Township. Moved to approve. Second. Aye. 
I did that on purpose that day. <laughs> oh, okay, I, didn't... Say hi. All right. <laughs> okay. I have, I have a question. Why would you get a three two on sale renewal if you have already have a strong beer on sale? I was wondering that too. Are for you talking for Ella Marie? Yeah. They, why would you want three two if you got strong beer? Mm. I don't think. Does she have strong beer? I don't think she has strong beer. It says wine and strong oh, beer. Oh, on sale. Yeah, I'm They're not sure. They're both on sale. Yeah, I'm not sure. Can I ask who made the yeah, motion on Shady Hollow? John. John. Oh, okay. And second? Barry. Barry. All right, thank you. Thanks, Mary. That was yes. Uh, <laughs> numerous times. <laughs> Morning, Jim. Good morning. Good morning, Jim. Do you have an announcement to make? I do. Congratulations. <laughs> you probably heard, I guess, this morning, um, the number of grant uh, announcements were made this, well, yesterday was the big one, was the LRIP grant. Uh, we were successful in getting $1.5 million for the last phase of Westlake Drive. And... Uh, uh, one of our townships, Cormoran Township, was successful uh, for East Ida Road, I believe it is, or, or what it's called. They got uh, $300,000 uh, for that hmm. project. And uh, the last one was the uh, Transportation Alternatives Grant uh, that the City of Freezee got for the trail connecting to Wanigan Park from the, our intersection there at uh, 29 where the crossing is, uh, going through the school and up to the park. They received about, uh, I think it was $225,000, mm. so, yeah. And Jim, that's the one that we kind of earmarked some smart money to help with? Um, well, I think we'll have to kind of juggle it around on what we can use it on, but the, the road portions or whatever, we'll, we'll figure that out on how we can help them there, yeah. Okay. Congratulations, Jerry. You yeah. stepped out, but 1.5 million grant we got for finishing West Lake Drive. So, yep. Jim awesome. got. Yep. That's from the Pavilion West and, and that section? For yeah. ours, our road is, yeah, from Legion all the way up to uh, Washington Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, we've, got the, we've got the, all the titles squared on that part, though, don't we? We do. Yep. We've got, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> So we're, that'll be a nice project. Uh, I think it's for gas called for 26. And we have uh, federal funding that we've secured. The city was successful on the trail portion for about, I can't remember what their portion was, maybe 800,000. And I think we have about $800,000 of federal funds coming for the road. So uh, that really saves on our state aid budget and that oh. we don't have to use on that road. Well, those 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 get spendy per mile. Yep. That's your time. So for your consideration today, um, it's some awards. Uh, the first one is a bid award for bituminous material. Uh, this is uh, material we use in our seal coat of the roads. Uh, we received uh, our one quote from uh, um, Flint Hills Resource. That's typical these days. They're the only supplier. Uh, this year, uh, we have a, an amount of $564 a ton. This is less than last year. I think almost $10 a ton less, so, which is good. Good. Move to approve 1B. Second. Motion by John, second by Richard. All in favor say aye. 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 Next uh, is approval of uh, our uh, bid award for dust control. Um, the low bidder was Corbin Excavating out of Sabika. Um, they came in at $275,770. Um, this is up just a little bit from last year, but uh, we're recommending approval for them. Motion to approve 1C. Motion by Barry, second by Richard. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. And finally, our weed spring quotes. Um, we're recommending um, award to l &M Road Service. This is the same contractor we had last year. Um, they have $135 an hour. This is up, I don't know, I think maybe $5 an hour from last year. Um, we went through the comparison uh, with the uh, second bidder. As you can see, they had two different uh, methods of spraying and 
we just kind of had to figure out, you know, fairness, you know, if they could do the whole county with a six wheel ATV, which they can't, you know, um, we need trucks and areas and stuff like that too. And, uh, a bigger sprayer to spray out from the roadway. So we're recommending, uh, award to L and M. What is the est estimated miles? Is that what you think that they can only do with that unit? Correct. Yep. That's, we just kind of tried to provide that as an estimate estimates for comparison purposes. How does, how do they run that six wheel ATV? Do they have uh, tanks on them? Yeah. Yeah. I think they have smaller tanks yeah. and they probably, and then they have a support truck that has to refill them and that. Okay. So I, I saw cars truck carrying two of them going down the road just the other day. And I was curious on it. I've seen them operate those for like the power companies and stuff. And yeah, I mean, cars is owned by Lake Region, I think. Yeah. So I think their specialty is under power lines, yeah. which a six wheeler would be more efficient. But um, we are confident then that this is um, the low the low quote, and I mean, this will be cheaper for us than this combination. Correct. Yes. Okay. I will. I can make a motion to approve. Motion by Barry. One D. Well, second. Second by Dave. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 All right. We want to break. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's a county yeah. being sued because yeah. they didn't. They <laughs> they didn't take the low bidder. Who did? There's a county in Minnesota that's that didn't take yeah. the low bidder.
Dave? Maybe we just start without him. <laughs> Dave? <laughs> Sheriff Conner, good morning. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, members of the board, I have two items this morning. The first being I'm looking for approval for the State of Minnesota Annual County Boat and Water Safety Grant. Uh, this year we will be getting 23,931, which is up approximately 4,500 from last year. A motion to I'll, I'll make a motion to approve uh, 1E. Motion by Dave, a second? A second. Second by Erica to approve resolution 1E. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Carried. And item number two, uh, we received our new boat uh, that uh, was paid two thirds for, was paid by the uh, uh, federal equipment grant and um, I can tell you right now it's a big boat when people see it they're gonna probably say boy that's a big boat but you know <laughs> um, it, it's it's big until you you go in and get called to a rescue where the waves are three feet high and and you, you're trying to stay in one spot you know to help the dive team and and help people locate somebody um, Can't remember, is this an outboard? It is. Mm -hmm. Yep, it is an outboard. Uh, you'll you'll have to see it, but uh, we are we are thankful that we have that, and now we are uh, asking for uh, approval to put lights and equipment on that boat. Um, uh, this will be covered by the Boat and Water Grant, and the cost is eight thousand four eighteen. Mr. Chair, I'll make motion. No, motion by Barry. I'll second. Make motion to approve. Second by Dave. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Thank you. <clears throat> That's all I have. Thanks, Todd. Thanks, Todd. It's a couple, couple minutes early, Kyle, but I suppose. Uh, comprehensive plan update uh yeah we can start with the comp plan update good morning mr chair commissioners um a couple things for the comp plan update um, at the april 4th township association meeting bolton and mink will be here uh giving a presentation or as long as richard will allow, or roger will allow it <laughs> um probably 10 minute presentation um other than that not much more but would like to set another work session date um They've made some leaps and bounds since we met with those interest groups. Um, so I don't know what your availability will be, but if you'd like to discuss that now, I can propose it to them. Um, have them on site again. Are you looking in April, May? Preferably April. Okay. Another two hours. I think that was uh, adequate time last time. Um, I would say the later in the week is works better yeah. for me. Monday, Tuesdays are busier. Mm -hmm. Mornings or afternoons? Preferably morning, but. Uh, what, what week are we looking at? For me? I got. We got meetings next week in the morning. You, when are you looking like the middle, the 17th, 17th 18th, 18th, 19th? 19th. I am. The 18th, I have meetings. I'll, I have West Central Juvenile and EDA, so I wouldn't, I don't know that I have a two hour block really that. 17th, 19th? What about the 9th, Friday the 19th? That would work for me. It's early in the morning. I, I got to be out here by 10. By 10? I got a job that day. That I wanted it, but <laughs> <laughs> does that does that worry? How early can they go? Well, they commute, so that is a little bit of a problem. I think ten is. I'm not sure if their hotel stays come out of our budget or their own budget, but 
Where are they, Adam? Uh, one is, she's one St. Cloud, but I think one is maybe a little farther south. One of the three. The 17th would work for me also. Yeah, it would, 17th would be Wednesday? Fine. Wednesday the 17th. Mm -hmm. um, I have soil and water that morning. Good. Yeah, if we could do it in the morning, I got airport commission starting at 1130 here. So well, they we make that work. Yes, when's your soil? I can launch? go I can go there early and that starts at nine, I think. So I make half hour, forty five minutes. Come over. Or the afternoon, does the afternoon work of the seventeenth? It if it's ten o'clock that day, I can I mean there's I poke my head in there for a while. It's not like I worked on anything. We want two hours though, don't we? Ten? Ten o'clock? Ten to noon. Yeah, because your soil your soil water's at eleven. No, it's eleven thirty or airport here. Or airport. So if it's down here, we'll have to, if it was further than that, we'll have to have an airport. Might be an hour and a half. It might not need two hour meeting. Yeah. Because a lot of times we use the virtual. On we can go to the third floor. I'll just make it EOC. Okay. Okay, I'll propose the 17th, 10 o'clock. Um, so I've got some commission recommendations for March 27th. Um, the first being Jarco Properties, uh, which is a preliminary plot for 30 existing units um, and an additional 41 new units to be known as the Elite Shop Condos. Um, there was a stipulation that uh, myself and Commissioner Okeson meet with the Highway Department on site with the applicant. I spoke with uh, Maintenance Superintendent uh, Jonah Jacobson this morning and that permit was issued um, with the stipulation that the approach to the north be removed. Um, Jonah said it met the criteria um, obviously to be granted and he also felt um, you know there was some safety concerns from the neighbor to the north he had measured um, all of the brush and trees and there was none within county right away uh, so his recommendation to her was maybe remove some vegetation from her own property and then he also felt that with the grading of uh, this new parcel um, being lowered uh, that it would help sight lines so overall he felt that the the project safety wise was an improvement. Which is on the board? Well, the safety wise improvement <laughs> when you. Visibility wise. Yes, I don't think uh, that's an accurate statement when you add traffic, but that's not a real concern. But um, I, I did, and I shared with Bruce, um, I do have some concerns over this. Not that, not that the. Um, but the aesthetics of this facility seems you know with the with the crushed rock on like on your the first part it's crushed rock on on the whole project is that going to be in this the second part too okay because that really i mean for me if that second part was going to be all crushed rock would be not something i i mean i couldn't support it at all because that is there's not a blade of grass or a tree within that fenced area on your first parcel and i think that's that it and it's six foot fence with with three wire barbed wire around the top it looks like an industrial zone and that's that's not what i would like on residential area i mean then this is residential so if that's not going to be the case that I'm, I'm happy because that i would have had a real sticking point with that part of it it really does look it looks industrial and that's and that's fine for that corner but if you as you get closer now to residentials i do have a concern i think a lot of your concern was discussed that night at the public hearing on what the aesthetics would look like and it would be a lot the, lot better the look. colors are different and the applicant in, indicated there you know there won't be any fence around this project specifically because of the con the way the buildings are constructed those other buildings are commonly owned or commonly shared and they can access above the, how does that work Bruce they can they can go over the walls um, where this one will not be that way and it, if you'd like uh, Barry this indicates what will be impervious and what will not in comparison to the other one more of an individual condo storage units um one thing that i see is it's a real for water retention and if you look right to the north of your existing ones there's a ditch that runs there. I, I've, I've farmed this piece for many years so i'm quite familiar with it but there's a existing ditch there that could easily be 
built up to to slow you know to hold your water and slow it down. I know that that Corman Lakes is going to do, but um, here you have buildings right um, right backed into that. And I don't maybe you could make a. I think you could store a lot of water there and just slower slow release just on the right on becker five there, there's a ditch that comes into that and um it looks like you would probably have to maybe take a unit out of here or something just to access that but well, i think right now isn't one release and, and water too we got water apex did a whole a whole water retention program like farm work you know and the good thing about this it's I mean, I, th I think we should try to slow and clean the water up as best as possible, but this is not going into a major, it's going into into filter systems. It's going off of your property into systems that are filtering it already. So, I mean, there's a positive, that's a positive in my opinion for water quality. If you can slow it down on your property, that's, and I that's better. I believe you are working with Corman Watershed on, on their concerns and their engineer will look at it also. So and The PCA also will because they're disturbing more than an acre here. Oh. So. It'll, okay. What um? There'll be a lot of oversight. What? <clears throat> what's the density on this? What is the allowable density for impervious surface? So sixty-five percent for, you know, any driving services structures are limited to fifty percent. Is that different on just a regular commercial, or conditional? That's outside of the shoreline for agricultural standards. Shore commercial outside the shoreline would be an, even higher than that. I don't have the exact number, but. Residential would be a little bit lower, but so this is one of the first projects that's utilizing that impervious surface increase that we amended seven. probably two years ago. Um, you get out, you get thousand feet or from a lake or three hundred feet from a river, and as long as your stormwater is engineered, you get significant uh, increase. Um, one thing about this wetland here, and I, you probably have this, but if that's a closed. There's a, it's kind of a closed area. You're, if it water comes up, it's going to creep out farther so um, you might it might run into the corners of your buildings because I, I know that it gets wet in there and uh, you actually might want to drain tile on your property line and <laughs> make sure you have an outlet for some of that but um, that's not fe you know fencing is one lighting and he, and he state Bruce stated that the, there's no lighting directing towards towards the north residence now it's all on the south side how about on this, on the northeast part, are there are there's lights on those three? Not these, these three. These three in the. You'll have lights over their doors, the far northeast. They'll have they'll have dome they'll have dome LED um, above the doors. And I think it's the resident. One of the guys that complained the most was right up in this area. He's got a camper up in here. I think that's where the pictures I, I think are shown. Um, and you have is that is that concrete surface that you're is it concrete or is it rock? In front of the buildings would be concrete. And then the drive is a rock. Gravel. Okay. I know their concerns up in this corner was lighting too. And if you see their pictures, those lights are bright. Um, and I guess I saw. Is it a Right. I, I, yeah, I know you, you said that. And just, just to clarify, though, you had um, Mike came out and did a test on the lighting. What what standard is that for? I mean, is it is it residential lighting? Is it commercial lighting? The point point oh nine or point nine? So there's I don't recall where this these standards actually came from. Um, they're industrial requirements. It's labeled as industrial hygiene lighting for office and industry for safety requirements. Uh, low hazard environment, low activity is 5.4 or 0.5 foot candles. High activity is one foot candle. Um, and then when it's a high hazard, it would be two foot or five foot. Um, according to Mike, when we got a complaint on the existing, um, I gotta find that document. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm just According to Mike, when we got that existing complaint on the f few current buildings there, that was in April of 2020 he went out there and at the right under the lights on the east side of the building it was 4.5 foot candles going east 75 feet to the fence he had a reading of 0.9 um so low hazard high activity would be one foot candle so it would be but that's but that's for industrial that's an industrial standard right not re i mean and this is 
I'm just pointing out you're 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 quoting off industrial standard. Is there a residential standard also? I don't have that, and we don't have any by ordinance. No, I I know, but when you quote something against industrial, then you're saying, well, is there is there is it a less? We don't we're not we're not addressing that. I'm not saying we should, but I'm just saying is to recognize that that might be a different standard if you're in residential. But, but also very after that was done, the lakes on the east side. Of the yeah, lake I saw that. And I told Bruce too that they came in after the fact, so I don't have a lot. I mean, right, but I'm saying the lakes yep. after that was done, the lakes on the east side, they, they had lakes on the east side of the building, and they disabled those Those two, those two on that end. Yep. No, I'm aware of that. I, but I, and, I, and I acknowledge that that building, that residential one came in after those buildings, so you're like, you did have them there. But I think uh, Mike did pull those at that, or. Um, I, I just worry about the lighting going going northeast on there. If they're if they're directional down, if they're real good directional, I don't think. But um, that's that's just one of the, uh, another concern. Okay, so hopefully they'll they'll appease the landowner. So um, is this is this getting too close to your property line with that road? How I see it getting very near there. Is that um, they can proper. Roadways can encroach if okay. there's precautions for it, but they can if necessary. Um, there is some setbacks on there that will change a little bit. The right-of-way setback is 30 feet, not 20. And then there was a side property line that was listed as 20, which it's actually 10. So the final will look a little different. But in, in my opinion, I mean, I know this falls within our ordinance, but I think this density in a resident, you know, this is residential country is is too dense for what I would like to see the future go in Becker County. I think we need to look at our ordinance. And when we redo that, I think we need to address this because um, this. Well, if it was zoned residential, it would be lower. The fact is, is that we set ag agricultural impervious is higher. Um, so, you know, you can look through reclassifications of zoning dif districts if this is a residential area we could look at classifying it that way and then it would be less so that's <clears throat> something we can talk about when we're discussing land use right i mean generally when you when you look at land use if you're in a resident residential would be the most restrictive right and then we get to ag and that would be middle of the road and commercial <coughs> and industrial would be higher um, and that's just kind of how the ordinance is geared which is the board I do want to thank Bruce for at least address or at least considering some of those concerns. Um, it, I'm that commissioner that you used to deal with down. Where was it that always wants one less? You know, <laughs> I don't know which one that is, but I mean, I I think he's done as he's done some good things to to modify it further. But did we have any um, conditions on that one? Just um, just that we just, meet with the highway oh, department. Oh, that's right. Yeah, um, and then yeah, he does have. Permit, so we agreed on that. I'll make a motion to approve the preliminary plat. Motion by Erica. Do I have a second to concur? I'll second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Uh, second applicant, Ethan and Cassandra Thompson, was a conditional use permit for a UPIC flower business. A motion? Thanks, thanks, Bruce. Yeah, thanks. I'll yeah. make a motion to approve the um, conditional use permit for the UPIC flower. Motion by Erica to concur planning and zoning. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Carrie, if you just want to shoot me a text when you can I adjourn, I'll be back. Our next item on the agenda is the cl closed session for labor negotiation strategy. And I need a motion to close. And I'll make a motion to close the meeting. According to statute uh, 13D.03, 13 13. subdivision <laughs> yeah. one b I'm not going to read it this time. No, I'll, make, uh, I'll second Erica's motion. Okay. A motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Carried. And we're even 10 minutes early.